Hi, good morning, everybody. How is everybody doing? Nice to see you all. It's very nice to see you as always every Friday or every other Friday here on our Zoom meetings. Um, we are going to give a little a few minutes to people to join in. Please mute yourself if you're not talking. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm Paula Adams with the Hawaii After School Alliance, and we have a great team with us today. We have Lexi and Jen, and I would like just to welcome you. Um, and Lexi and Jen are going to talk about what we are going to do today. And we, we usually link, or we try to link our Friday calls with our a Hawaii after school quality guidelines. And today we are linking it to the uh, sense of Hawaii. Um, so if you haven't checked our quality guidelines, it's a great resource for everybody to see where your program is doing, um, how they can improve or the areas to improve and the others that you are an, ex an expert on. So this is the link. Let me see if I can put it here. Please check it out. And I'm going to pass the mic to Lexi. Thanks, Paula. Hello, everybody. Um, before we get going today, I wanted to start with a few announcements. The first is our summer program map and database is officially up and running on our website. Um, this is a great resource for families to find services that they might need for this summer, um, whether that's a summer program for their students to attend or a meal pickup location, we encourage you to check it out on our website and share it to anybody who might be um, interested or looking for a summer program. Um, and if your organization is not already a part of this map, there's a short form on the website that you can fill out so that we can add you to the map. The next announcement is America After 3 p.m. is a nation, nationwide um, span of about 10 years, 13, good long time of data um, of how children spend their time, looking into how children spend their time in the out of school time, specifically after school hours. So that's the after 3 p.m. Um, and I believe it was in November-ish, they released the most recent data set from 2019 data of after school. But this past week, a specific subset of that data regarding summer programming was released. Um, so a few trends in that data highlight that parent satisfaction with programs, with summer learning programs specifically, is high and parents are eager to enroll their children in a program. So shout out to all of you and kudos for making that happen. To explore the data more, um, please feel free to check it out on the America After 3 p.m. portal with the link that Paula will be dropping in the chat. And then the next announcement is uh, a great resource, the Mizzen by Mott app. It was specifically designed for after school and for being used in the out of school time hours. There's lots of engaging content and activities to do with youth of all ages. The app's theme of the month for May is health and wellness. So with that, there's different activity playlists, um, such as relaxing yoga and games and mindfulness or activities designed to get kids outside and engaged with social and emotional health. Um, so lots of great activities. May is also National Teen, self, National Teen sorry, Self Esteem Month. So the Mizzen app has an activity that helps build well-rounded teens, for example, with um, different activities and games like that. So if you haven't already, we encourage you to check out the app with all the different playlists and activities that it has on it. And then the last announcement I have is the National After School Alliance has released their, opened their call for their fifth cohort of youth ambassadors. Youth aged 13 and older are invited to submit their after school story as part of the nationwide call to amplify youth voices. Youth can submit their story um, responding to a variety of different questions, mainly focused on how after school has impacted them and what it has meant to them, whether that be through many different years or through the pandemic. Um, and they can tell their story in any creative medium that they see fit, whether that's a written essay, a poem, a podcast, a hip hop dance, whatever fits for them. So if you work with youth, 
that would be interested, we encourage you to encourage them to apply. The deadline is June 30th for this. So there's a little bit of time to work on that. Um, and with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Jen. Thanks, Lexi. Um, so I have the pleasure and the honor of introducing our speaker today, um, who's gonna be talking about how we can integrate Olelo into our after school and all the work that we do with our youth. Um, so Pele Honua Mea Harmen is a daughter of Laakea and Lemomi Suvanuma, the wife of Keiko Harmen and the mother of Kala Manamana, Kao Mualii, Nali'i Poai Moku, and Hi'iaka. She graduated from Kamehameha Schools, went on to receive her bachelor's degree in Hawaiian language, her indigenous teaching certificate, as well as her master's degree in Hawaiian language and literature from UH Hilo's Kahaka Ula O Ke'eliko Lani. She has been involved in the Hawaiian language revitalization efforts for over 20 years, 17 of those as a teacher at Kekula o Navahio Kalani o Pu'u Hawaiian Medium School in Kea Aupuna. So Pele, thank you so much for uh, being here with us today and I'll turn it over to you. Okay, mahalo nui, aloha kako. Um, thank you so much for joining lunchtime on a Friday. <laughs> so you folks are obviously warriors out there in the, um, in the field. Um, while we're getting started, if you could just introduce, introduce yourself in the chat box and um, I'm going to put my screen on, but um, it's always weird to hear yourself introduced yeah, when you like, oh, okay. But basically I'm just, um, I'm a Kumu who um, has taught for, yeah, now that I hear it. I, I remember when I was one of the first the young Kumu <laughs> who started at Navahi, and now I am, I guess, considered a seasoned Kumu. Um, but really, it's just, um, I was asked, um, very graciously asked by Paula and um, Jennifer to join you folks. And I'm just gonna share um, some basic things about Olelo and how you can perhaps incorporate it into your programs and your um, companies and your agencies and wh wherever you, um, play and work um, these days. And so integrating Olelo into after school. And as you introduce yourself in the um, chat box, um, you can try and do it in Hawaiian. And this is very basic, yeah. Oh, like oh, you know, I see a lot of Hawaiian names out there. And no Ma. So where do you live? Where, where's the place that you come from and you connect with? Um, and as you're doing that, we are going to ho'olo here. We're going to listen to um, a very quick um, excerpt because I don't know for many people um, how how often you've heard Hawaiian or if you even hear Hawaiian in your daily um, in your daily rituals or if you've ever heard Hawaiian even though we live in Hawaii you know so um, I'm gonna actually I cued it sorry I'm just not the tech person I've gotten a lot better but it's not my thing so let's see i'm gonna have to escape from there okay and this is Le Rekha. she's actually um these are one of the resources that we're going to go over but um she was a kahu in my church growing up and so um on quick street in honolulu i know a lot of your guys are in honolulu that small little hawaiian church that you probably pass by in the middle of all the industrial um, honolulu and I think there's like the um, car dealership at the corner, but she was a kahu when I was growing up. And so just to hear her. E Yehovah, me kau keke o Yesu Christo, me kabana o kou kwade ple. Noho me mako, kou kuma ya mako, iki na nina u e iki kwe loa ni ya mako. Havi ya kakou pe iki kena o mako po ilo ko kala ko nina u. A nao no e noho me mako, e iki kwa wana ko mako, na ki a ki ai. Hole e vol, o o e kuma mako, ilo ko kai nao ka makua, ke keiki ya me ka oa ni ple. Mai ki a kumole ki a pao ole. Amen. Um, Amen. Hi. So she actually is starting us off with the um, with a little. Um, could you folks hear that? Sorry. 
I just want to make sure you could hear it. Okay, so um, as I get back up, could you hear it? Could you hear it talking? Okay, so um, if you think about it, that was actually, that aired, um, there used to be a program on public television in 1998. So in 1998, I was just out of high school. I, I graduated in 97. Um, that's not too long ago. That was um, a little over 20 years ago that our kupuna, um, people who were raised in Hawaiian language, could speak very fluently, um, very comfortably uh, on command uh, using our, our language in everyday um, use. And she, Kahuri of, um, Le, of course, has passed on since, but um, it's kind of crazy to think we're in 2021 and not too long ago, um, there were kupuna who um, were raised by their parents and heard from their parents. Um, their parents were native speakers who um, were able to um, conduct their co conversations in Hawaiian language. And here we are, um, and we're still trying to um, revitalize our, our language because why is that important? Well, that's one of the questions that we're going to raise today. Is it important to us being that we came, we we all live here in Hawaii? Um, some of us are not um, maybe born and raised here, but we've called we call Hawaii our home now. And so, um, is this an important thing to um, perpetuate? And is this important to carry on? And why? When we live in a um, society that is very much um, dominated by um, Western civilization. And so um, I hope by the end of this, then at least if you're kind of skeptical about the importance of Hawaiian language, um, at the very least, you will um, embrace that it is important to us. And so um, I see people come from all over. Mahalo nui um, for sharing with us. Um, Kalihi, Manoa, my mom is from Kalihi, Manoa, so Waimanalo, I have Ohana out there. Um, it's very important for us to know um, that long ago, actually not too long ago, um, Hawaiian was the, the language of everyday uh, commerce, politics, um, government, and um, it didn't matter if you were born here or if you were raised here, if you came here and you wanted an audience with our um, queen, um, if we wanted an audience with any of the ali'i, um, especially uh, Ruth Ke'ele Kolani for our College of Hawaiian Languages named after, uh, you needed to conduct your business in the medium of Hawaiian language. And so these are just some really kind of staggering um, I don't know if you folks are familiar with Code Switch, but there's a program on NPR called Code Switch, and they did they did highlight Eola Kaola Eola Hawaii, but um, it wasn't really until I kind of looked into this that um, it's very dire to hear that every two weeks a language dies. Yeah, and this this happens when um, its last native speaker, their survivor surviving speaker, passes away, and so in a very short time, when we think about it. Um, that short video clip that I showed you was was aired in 1998, so about 23 years ago. Um, that's about half the time that it takes um, for they're they're predicting that half of the world's languages will be gone within a century, and so that's one fourth of the way there. If you think about um, the time that has elapsed since Kahureka's um, filming and then now. Um, the fate of a language can be changed in a single generation if, not, if it is no longer being learned by children. And so these are things that were very much understood by um, those who created legislation and who overthrew the, the Hawaiian government. And we're not going to get into the history of all of that. What we're going to focus on is our language today. And, um, and so this is just a really brief, brief um, history of Hawaiian language revitalization, right? And so um, sometime between around 800 AD, it, it depends, you know, who you, who you consult and who you talk to, but that's when these islands were settled by our Polynesian ancestors. And um, the Hokulea and Hikianalia, they just completed their worldwide voyages. They're on their way out pretty soon to, to continue their voyaging. And so 
um, those efforts were all a part, as well as the Hawaiian language revitalization, revitalization efforts were all the result of um, the Hawaiian Renaissance, you know, in the 1970s. But prior to that, um, we were a very literate nation. And so if you look at um, the missionaries arrived here in 1820, and two years later, we printed the first Hawaiian spelling book. Um, and then we had people come from all over, yeah, when we had our first contract laborers. And most of us here in Hawaii were all, you know, we're not, we're all, we're, we're not all Native Hawaiian. I myself, my maiden name is Suganuma, um, part Japanese. You know, our, my kids, um, my husband is Paule, Korean, Filipino. And so our kids are all, all of those things. Um, and so we have to acknowledge um, our heritage, uh, of being this place where people want to come and um, they embrace living in Hawaii and then they intermarry. And so um, in 1893, sorry, sorry, I'll continue on. Um, we all know that there were, that was the beginning of the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy. And three years later, what was a very important, um, well, what was a critical blow to our language was that Hawaiian language was banned in schools just three years later. And this was, um, a deliberate way to how do you how do you um, get rid of a culture and a people? Um, you first make sure that they don't know their language, right? Because that's why language is so important. Language is um, the holder of um, not just our cultural knowledge and our ancestral knowledge, but also our way of thinking, our way of seeing the world. Um, and we'll go over that a little bit more. Um, so Hawaiian language was officially banned in schools. And then we had statehood um, in 1959. And not until 1978 did Hawaiian language become an official language of the state, along with English, of course. So English um, was the official language on the books until 1978, where we um, were the legislature finally officially adopted Hawaiian language as an official language of the state. Now, besides Hawaii, um, within the United States, there are only Alaska that has an official, uh, other official languages. And I think they have something, they have more than two like us. They have something like more than six, I wanna say, um, native languages. And then in other areas, of course, there are populations of native peoples that live in certain areas, but they're not officially recognized. Their languages are not officially recognized as um, in those in those states. Um, in 1984, well, well, we'll jump to the next one. In 1987, it wasn't until um, years later that the law banning Hawaiian language in schools was lifted. And so because of that law that was on the books from 1896 um, being lifted, we can have programs now like our Hawaiian medium schools, our Punalaleo preschools. Um, kids can um, once again, learn in our public school system, which is one of the, which is the oldest school system, west of the Rocky, um, to have um, a, a public school system. And so um, it's one of the oldest public school systems in the history of America. And so um, we can now again have teach our language, the native language of this place that we call home in our schools and in our programs and our after school pro programs in our schools from um, our regular school time, right? And so that is um, just a really brief overview of our, of our history as a people um, here in Hawaii. And so <clears throat> as and I, I kind of look really briefly at who was here and I know there's, there's a whole gamut of people. <laughs> so your um, proficiency in language as well as your understanding of our history is, um, can be very um, diverse. And so um, really what we wanna talk about is um, what, what connects us and what brings us together as a people. And so I'm going to, um, I wanna show a little clip while we, I'm so sorry, you're gonna see me turn off these things and then go back on it. Um, and so, a little clip from our school, from my school actually, um, Ke Kula o Navihi o Kalani o Pu'u. And once I can open it, um, 
we'll take a little snippet of what this idea of kuleana kalamai. Okay. So here we go. The basic reason that you need to put an extreme amount of effort into maintaining Hawaii. So actually, um, so that's just a little snippet and <clears throat> um, of what we do. So it's 100% language, um, Hawaiian language. And I think you saw that was years ago, but I was teaching math through Hawaiian language. Now, not everyone is going to, that's not the goal of everyone, right? Um, however, um, how can we all shoulder this responsibility? And that's what kuleana means. How can we all shoulder this responsibility of taking care? And I wanted you to see our principal, what she said about how, um, you know, in today's world, there's so many things that divide us. Um, it can be politics, it can be vaccinations, not, not getting vaccinated, all these other things. And yet, um, I think one thing that we can all get, get around is that Hawaii is a very special place. It has a very unique history. And um, within any language is that, um, that understanding. And um, I wanna just by show of hands, you can just physically raise up your hand. How many of us are born here in Hawaii? Born and raised in Hawaii? Okay, so majority. Let me see. I gotta scroll through three different screens. Okay, how many um, are transplants? They moved here later on in life, which is just as good. Okay, okay. So we have a pretty good, um, and and so when we think about wherever we came from, and if it is in Hawaii. Um, what are these unique experiences that we, and understandings, um, even if you're not fluent in Hawaiian language, um, that we can perhaps offer to the rest of the world as this beacon of light and understanding that you know, in a time of so much turmoil can help us. Yeah. So I always think about, I mean, I wasn't born fluent. My kids, um, definitely we raised them in Hawaiian language and um, from the time that was their first language actually. And, um, but my parents did not speak Hawaiian. Uh, my grandparents did, they never ever spoke to us in Hawaiian. They would speak to each other or they would speak to um, their elders. And so I actually was raised um, with um, knowing my great, great grandparents and they could speak Hawaiian of course. Um, and then they could speak Hawaiian to my grandparents um, and at a level of understanding, and then they would turn and speak to us in English. And so, um, yet yeah, I remember, um, even though my parents didn't speak Hawaiian fluently at home, of course there are words that we were raised with, and then there were mannerisms that we were raised with, and there are understandings that we were raised with. Um, that look that your parents gave you that told you exactly what you should not be doing and you better fix it right away you know, those kinds of things. Um, um, going to other people's homes and making sure that you bring something, you're not gonna show up empty handed because that's shame. You know, those are all kinds of things that we, it doesn't matter if you're native, if you're native Hawaiian or if you're um, um, not, 
you were we were all raised with these kinds of understanding and these are the things that we want to perpetuate in the next generation because um and, and it's in our language and so i just want to i'm going to put in the um, chat box a uh, jamboard and i know you guys probably hate jamboards now because they're we've been doing them for how many months but jump on the jamboard and try and put on post-its you know how do you um do it um do a post-it and put different words that we all know or even if you're not from here that you know because you live here in hawaii in hawaiian yeah so what are some of those hawaiian words that um um we know and we can use pretty confidently um in everyday life okay so just a real quick time to do that and while you're doing that i'm going to queue up the next um thing that i wanted to share with you folks Okay. So I'm actually gonna jump. Super overpowering in. All modeled after one of Hawaii's legendary figures. Born and raised in the school's home of Puna, Joseph Koho'oluhi Navahio Kaleni Opu'u served his people in many ways as a legislator, a lawyer, and even a newspaper publisher. E kumu ho'ohali ke o Navahi maumuli o kona ano he kanaka aloha lahui wea ka mua. A leila aloha aina, aloha a ho'ona'awao. Okay. So that brings it to our next one. Let's see what we got, we came up with so far. Wow, you guys know lots. Okay, my kai, kalamai. That's very important in our in our culture to mihi uh, to ask for forgiveness. Akahele holomua pauhana. <laughs> yes, it's poalima. It's Friday, so pauhana is very important. Maika iloa. Okay, mahalo. So, um, folks are pretty maika um, i. I didn't see any. It depends on where you. Oh, maha oi. Okay. Um, so we all grew up kind of hearing these words. I, I know I have a, I have a corker and I always tease her because, um, she actually, she's fluent in Hawaiian, you know, she learned in college and, um, so me and some of the other Kumu were talking one day at lunch. We're just kind of playing around and we, we threw out like a, a, a phrase. I don't even know if, um, you know, it's kind of pigeon, but, um, ete, you know, ete, and she was like, Oh, I never learned that in Hawaiian language class. And I said, oh, well, it, it, it's so funny because growing up in Hawaii, we just know what that means, like a tera, you know, and and um, and then she was. So every time I would see a, a, an example, I would have to point it out to her. Like, you see that girl over there, what she's doing? And I'm telling her in Hawaii, that's kind of it, you know, and she would be like, oh, I still don't get it. And then years after she she kind of laughed because she saw somebody doing something that was you know not very um my my you know and and so she says is that ete and i said yeah <laughs> you know so we have all of these phrases and mahalo you guys are awesome oh no and most of these things we would have learned in where so let's put that in a how did you learn whatever language you know in the second sheet so um, go to the second slide on the top and then where does it, this knowledge come from of um, these phrases of um, opio that I saw or mahalo, of course, aloha, um, akahele, which means to watch out. Okay, so school. So maybe we had some that went to kula kayapuni, makapapa olelo in Hawaiian language class. Some of you have been formally trained. University, my cousins, the playground partnership okay family my grandparents and great-grandfather you're very blessed to have that relationship church my kai 
okay? And we have extended family, nieces and nephews who go to um, immersion schools. Okay, my kai family work church. Um, so, manapaina ohana, when you're having parties, then that's always a good time to learn. And that's actually a lot of my learning in college happened at those kinds of social gatherings, right? When all your inhib inhibitions are down. And so, um, Nanakuli High School Hawaiian language. Okay, so some of you took some Hawaiian language courses in your high school, in your university. Mahalo for sharing that. You guys are great. So um, you, you already know how to, I think, navigate through the use of these words, but I something, whenever I talk to people, they get held back by certain things, whether it be dancing a hula or um, speaking in Hawaiian because they feel like they're not the best, or there, there might be somebody out there who is, you know, a better dancer than me. You know, I, I wasn't Miss Aloha Hula, or, oh, I don't dance for a hala. I just learned from, you know, my aunties at home. And so um, this is where we're, we, we have to get, get rid of that because the alternative is to only use English. And that means like what happened in 1896, banning Hawaiian language in schools, that's banning our children from learning something from us, right? And so we have to realize, it's weird for me to think about it, but um, my parents are not kupuna and I'm a makua, I'm a parent, you know? And so um, trapped in a, a juvenile's body, uh, no, I, I'm a juvenile trapped in a parent's body, but um, now we're the ones who have to a woman that Kuleana who have to hold on to that responsibility. I'm gonna go back to my slideshow of passing these things on to our children and our grandchildren and the next generation. Um, and so Kuleana is um, Kuleana is right, privilege, concern, or responsibility. And that's something that we all share because we all live here in Hawaii and we all have a responsibility to pass these things on. Um, because we've been so blessed and we, our lives have been fulfilled by knowing things like aloha. What does aloha mean? Um, how do you act when you go out um, and when you visit other people? Uh, how do you, is it okay when other people, you see your auntie and uncle, do you acknowledge them when you're outside of, you know, when you're out in the store? Yeah, of course we do. We don't pretend that we don't see them. These are things that we've been raised to understand. And um, even if we're not fluent, and some of us are, it's in our language. And so um, what guides all of us in our daily lives? Well, these are the three um, missions that guide me and um, my ohana in our um, every day. And they're actually from the schools that um, our program. And so, Eola Ka'olala Hawaii, the Hawaiian language shall live. And if it's going to live, then what do I do? I teach my children how to speak Hawaiian. I work in a Hawaiian school. Um, I conduct our halau hula after school um, in Hawaiian for our families as well as students, um, their parents, even if their parents don't understand. They can understand when I raise this hand how to do that. And I'm saying it's my lima ako, my right hand. And so they learn by doing, yeah? And so these are things that are important to me. And so what guides you? Um, no Ane'i Coca-Cola is another thing that was raised in that um, short video clip. And that's the mission, the nuukia of, um, of Kekula Onavihi Okalani Opu, where I've worked for the past 17 years, right out of college. Um, and it means no Ane'i from here um, comes our life, yeah? So Hawaii is where, um, we have um, learned, played, um, where a lot of our ancestors are buried, um, and where we're, we've cho chosen to raise our children. And so, because this is a place that we connect with, we have a responsibility to make sure that we take care of this place. And then Oka'olelo Ka'au Kamaoli is the um, mission of the um, Hawaiian Language College, Kikaka'ulo Likolani at UH Hilo, where I'm a graduate. And um, 
um, it means that the olelo is the thing that binds, our language is the thing that binds um, our, our Maoli, our Hawaiian-ness, our, that Hawaiian spirit that we have. And every Lahui, every um, people, every culture has a, has a Maoli, right? Um, they have a, 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 a way of being, a way of an essence, uh, an identity. Um, whether it be um, in Japan, where you know I've, I've traveled before, and what do you hear there? What's the language in Japan? It's um, Japanese. It can be different dialects depending on where you go. If you, you know, the Ainu people or the um, Okinawa, or it, it doesn't matter. But you hear their language, and what are the mannerisms that you see? Well, a lot of bowing and um, very respectful, very paahana. Yeah, they're busy. Uh, and then what is um, the spiritual side of their people? So every Lahui, every people, they have these things. And, and in our Hawaiian language, that's where that's what binds us to our identity as a people. And so in the Hawaii quality after school, I, I know um, this was brought up at the beginning that you folks have these after school guidelines. And of course, I was really, really happy to see that um, sense of Hawaii is, a, is an important part of the um, um, guidelines. And at the very least, um, to develop appreciation for Hawaii's rich culture, our diversity, which has always been important, and the indigenous language and culture of this place. And so, um, you know, to for us to be able to tap into that part of our um, sense of place is very, very important. Um, and how do we do that, right? So um, I think that's the most important thing. Um, I wanna make sure, and as you folks have questions that come up, then feel free to put it in the chat. I'm not the best at, um, I'm a good multitasker. I'm just not a good multitasker on Zoom. And so it's not, I feel like there's so much going on, um, but please um, feel free. And I'll try to leave some question, um, time for questions at the end as well. Um, so the next thing is that we want to be able to, at the very least, pronounce words correctly. Yeah. And it's, um, we have a hakalama system, which is a way of pronouncing, um, by, uh, it's a syllabic by syllables. Yeah. So it's a syllabic uh, pronunciation, I guess, song or technique, but basically, if you can pronounce your vowels correctly in Hawaiian, then you're, that's half the battle, right? And so, ah, is that we say the A in English as ah, A, E, O, U, A, E, O, U. And then we also have our indigenous letters, he, ke, la, mu, nu, pi, de, and okina. Now the okina is a glotto stop and that makes that little in your in your throat, right? And so okina are very important to pronounce. Um, what's kind of funny is nowadays, well, I don't know, sometimes I'll see words and there's a whole bunch of okina in there that don't really belong there. But I think it's a way of really kind of emphasizing the um, Hawaiian identity of the word. Um, however, if we put okina in, then it does change the meaning of it, right? And so we want to be mindful of that. So I, E, O, U, when you, all of you in your own um, areas be saying that in your um, in your place, and in your safe space, right? Nobody else is there. Or if there are people there, then maybe you don't want to say it too loud because they might think you're weird. I, E, O, U, right? And so um, the okina and the kahako, um, the kahako elongates those vowels. Um, they really do matter, right? And if you think about it, for those of us who were also raised speaking pidgin, um, we have kahako in our English words as well. Um, we kind of elongate certain parts and and I never thought about it until I actually traveled outside of Hawaii and then especially to the continental United States and people always say like, oh, you have an accent. And I'm thinking, I don't have an accent. Like, yeah, when I hear a Southern drawl, then they have accents. But to me, it's like, no, I, I think I speak pretty normal, but we actually do. And I didn't realize it until after that we actually, um, local people, we elongate certain vowels in English words that 
or we emphasize certain um, syllables um, because it's following Hawaiian thinking. And those are things that have been passed down generation to generation, even though we're not speaking Hawaiian, we're speaking, we're pronouncing in a Hawaiian way our English words. Um, and so um, you can say it, I'll say it out loud and then ko, ko, you have to, yeah, kind of roll that and then ko. So those are the two first ones. Ko means your, right? And that's one of the beautiful things about Hawaiian language. Um, and ko'u means mine, but um, there's no differentiation as far as sex goes. And so um, when I was talking earlier about Hawaiian being able to lend lessons to the rest of the world, um, this is a really good example. Yesterday I was on the phone with a lady from um, Scholastic, you know, the Scholastic books, um, and I'm working on a project with them, but she was, um, it's funny because in all their emails, they have those pronouns, right? And that's a new thing. Everybody's like, my pronouns are hers, he, hers, she, and, you know, um, um, her, hers, and she, or whatever it is. But in Hawaiian, ia, oya is he, or oya is she. And so when my kids were growing up, um, some of our extended family would kind of um, correct them because when they had to translate what they were thinking into English, they would call male she or female he um, because it there really is that no, no um, differentiating. Ko means your, it doesn't matter if you're a male or female. And ko means mine, it can be mine as a female or as a male, it doesn't matter, right? It's not hers, oh, that's hers, or that's his, ole. There's no differentiation. Kawa is war. The next set, kawa, so they, it doesn't have that kahako. Kawa, kawa is you and I, so it's a pronoun. Kaua, which is the same, it's basically the same as kawa. Kawa is the rain. Kawa is a servant, or like it is, a, is actually a, um, like a, I wouldn't say a slave caste, but it was a, a, a caste when you were a peel, when you were, um, captured in the old days by a warring um, chief, then they could make you a kawa, right? A servant class. Um, kala is to color or it's a color. Kala, I'd rather have kala than kala. Um, kala is money. And kala is the sun. So that ka serves as a the. So you see how just these little things really, really change the pronunciation. So pay attention to it. You know, when you have, um, if you're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to say it incorrectly, um, use your what we just learned really quickly about um, vowel sounds, and then also about what those lines, the kahako and the okina, mean, and just try to be mindful of those things. And so um, I wanted to go through. Okay, ho mama akako. So let's practice. Okay, this is on Oahu, right? These are place names. Place names are always the so if at the very least, if for those of us who are not fluent or, are, you know, feel very incompetent as far as language goes, find out what your street name is, because in Hawaii, we, we have Hawaiian street names, and then find out how to pronounce where you're, um, where you come from. Yeah, and that's a great start. Um, I am from Kane Ohe. Um, well, I'm not, actually. I live in, I live in Kea'o, Kea'o Puna, um, Hawaii. And so I'm on Hawaii Island in the Moko of Puna um, and in the Ahupua of Kiao. Um, okay, so this one, because that's the one thing, the one beef that everyone says, there's so many vowels. Yeah, correct. Waialua, Waialua. Kalaniana Ole. Kalaniana Ole. And you know how beautiful, this is your highway, right? Kalaniana Ole Highway. Um, um, how beautiful the translation of that is kalani, the heavens. Ana ole. Ana means to measure. So the immeasurable heaven. Ole is like a negative, right? So kalani ana ole, the um, immeasurable heavens. Um, and that's the name of one of our li'i, right? And so kalani ana ole, like like, not like, 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 like. And then these are other things like um, you know, we all have slang too. And so I, I have plenty of Ohana and friends. And, oh, I come from Wainai. 
okay, he can all, because then you know what that means, right? But the actual name is white anai. And there's a reason for that. White is water, anai is a mullet, the fish, right? And so that's a plentiful fish that was um, there in that area, white anai. And so um, other than why nai, why nai, there's actually a meaning to that it would be like water, same why, why, and then nai is like a fragrance, but that's not what that area is known for. That area is known for the anai fish and uh, the plentifulness, the bounty of that land. And then last, so um, that's a long phrase, right? That's a ole no yell. Aole, everybody knows what aole means. Um, no, right? Pau, pau, like we said, pau hana. Kaike, ike is knowledge. Ika halau ho'okahi. And halau is like a school, right? And ho'okahi is one. And so not all knowledge can be learned from one, one place, from one school. Um, and what's the flip side of that? That's, our, that's where our understanding, our Hawaiian knowledge comes in, our, our worldview is that um, be, be respectful of other people's opinions. Yeah, in a world where it seems like, geez, people want to do all kinds of crazy things if you don't agree with them. Um, our kupuna said, you can learn from every, all, all kinds of places, people of all walks of life, um, people with all backgrounds, all kinds of degrees or no degrees. It doesn't matter that if you're, if you have a, a, a humility within you, then you can learn from all of these places, not just from one place. And if we only learn from one place, then we're, we have a very narrow view of the world. And so um, those are our olelo, our ho'oma'ama'a. So ideas, okay, what do I do? Because I, I do an A plus program over here, or, um, you know, I don't really feel comfortable. Um, I don't feel like it's my place to use Olelo. Well, try what feels right in your individual programs. So whether it be looking at visions or missions of your organizations and how can we incorporate different um, Hawaiian um, values within that aloha, yeah? And aloha doesn't only mean, oh, I'm nice to everybody and I kiss people, but aloha sometimes, and for all of us who grew up in Hawaii, we can attest to that means calling you out when you're doing something wrong and making sure that I took the time out to correct you because I have aloha for you. And I don't want you to, um, we have an old saying, old saying, right? So the voke plant is what we made our, our um, mulberry is what we made our clothing with our, our, our tapa. And as soon as a little offshoot would come, then they would dig it out. Because if you have all these branches that are growing on that, trunk then you're gonna have all kinds of pukas when it comes to harvesting that and so um that's the literal transition the the symbolic meaning is make sure to fix these little these problems as our as our kiki are growing up um take the time to correct them yeah oh i'm talking to you um nana kamaka yeah listen to me don't be on your phone or um, don't be walking away when I'm talking to you because I want, you know, we, we, have a, we have a relationship. And so these little things that are embedded in our language and embedded in our upbringing, that's what we want to make sure that we, we look at when we look at our missions and our, our, of our organizations. Using attention getters, um, you know, you know, I don't know. I don't even know what we folks use now. One, two, whatever, three, four. But um, there are attention getters that we use all the time. And it, and I always think of my mom growing up and she would always say, Hooey! and I would think, oh, mom. So, um, but now I use that all the time and my kids are like, mom, you said hui and like 10 people turned around, who are you calling? And then I'll be like, well, that's how you know, they all, they all know what that means, right? Um, word of the day, using words of the day and just simple olelo Hawaii words. Um, they have a, you know, they have the word of the day on the radio, um, all kinds of places you guys can find. Olelo no eo, so our wise proverb is saying of the month or the week. And within these, there's so many, like ole pauka ike kahalo oho kahi, right? To teach tolerance and understanding. Or aohe hananui kialu ia. There's no task that is too great when we all work together. Um, to promote that kind of unity and um, working towards a common goal rather than emphasizing what 
what, what kind of the things that um, um, separate us. And so, um, and then just mele song. And this is where you bring in your ohana and your, your, commun um, your resources. Like, you know, there's so many people in Hawaii. I mean, you know, we have the Grammys and we have all those other big awards, but I'll go down the road and cousin, that lives across I mean they have the most beautiful voices and they're just musically talented and so using um building upon that with our keiki and a lot of these kids they go home and I mean I didn't know some of our graduates from Navahid could actually sing until they graduated and I see them at a concert and I'm like how come you never did that when you were in school and oh como you know popo. and so and then also learning the stories of these places that we we're teaching at um, the places where we live and then also where we where we teach or where we um, work and and sharing that with the kids some of them might know but I guarantee you a lot of them don't and um, and if we do not provide that to them then they're not going to have it and so I think Jennifer is going to get this to you but these are just I'm not I don't work for any of these organizations and I'm not trying to push anything but we live in the technology age. And so there's so many things where I remember as a graduate student having to go back to the microfiche in the um, in the library and looking up these old articles. And um, now, I mean, everything is at the fingertip, but we have Duolingo in Hawaiian language. Um, Duolingo. There are um, Ahapuna Leo offers online classes as well as I believe through Kanayo Kana Kamehameha schools um, this is a Padlet that I wanted to show you folks um, with all different resources. And then Kaiva Kilo Moku is another, um, they just kind of revamped their whole um, um, offerings, but they have a lot of um, resources there as well. And so, um, you know, everything is just there to, to take. And I didn't even look at YouTube and what, what's offered there. Um, you kind of have to sift through it and think, well, I don't know how, but these are organizations that definitely have put a lot of effort into um, creating resources for, for us to use. And, and they're manuahi, they're free. And so we should really, really um, use it. And if you don't feel comfortable singing, then guess what? There's videos that you can just turn on and have the kids sing along to um, that you can use. And so I'm gonna, oh, eh. So these are all in the, um, and you can also Google it. I mean, it's not like I'm, um, but these are just some of the, those resources. And so the Haleko Mo'o, um, they have a padlet and I have that on the, um, and they kind of try to put these different resources all together. So um, Vaihona Leo, um, native speakers that were um, recorded by Larry Kimura and um, through UH Manoa, their um, Kaleo Hawaii. So it's all available now. Um, a lot of you might have kupuna that were interviewed um, during that time and it's all through Hawaiian language. And even if you don't understand it, a lot of it is transcribed, not all of it, because that would take a few lifetimes, but a lot of it is transcribed and translated. Um, there's videos, there's different books, resources. Um, if you wanna go into old Hawaiian language newspapers, there's a column that shows that. And then also resources that you can just put up in your classroom, print and put up in your classroom, like um, about, um, sorry, different words, words of the day. All of these things are on that Padlet. Um, there are places like Pili Productions that have old videos with our kupuna talking all in Hawaiian in places um, that they were raised in you know, that they were raised in. And so they're talking that talk about sense of place. That's a perfect resource. And then we have cartoons too, um, offered through places like OEV TV um, that aren't in Hawaiian. Some of them are, but at least they share our mo'olelo, our stories about um, Maui, you know, the Hawaiian Superman. <laughs> but I don't know how many kids now listen to Brother Is and all those kinds of things. And so these are just um, some of the resources that are, easily accessed and I would um, encourage you folks to um, to to take advantage of because 
we, um, we can all help each other. So I, I, I'm sorry, I see I have five minutes and not even five minutes, because I think they have some things, but are there any like super, super important questions um, that any of you wanted to ask? Kalamai, I talk a lot and I only had an hour. Um, but these, all of these resources, please, um, ho'ohanaya, um, our language will only live if we use it and, um, you know, use whatever, you know, that's a starting point. And then by all means, go out and learn more, um, get your guys own mo'olelo from your ohana. Um, um, a lot of my kupuna, they passed away already and, you know, I, they're not here to ask, but, um, Fortunately, I've had a lot of kumo and a lot of mentors, um, whether it be in hula or in language, um, that have shared with me. And so um, now my kuleana is to pass this along to the rest of us, right? To you folks, to my kids, to my students. And then we know we ensure that it, these things live on for one more generation. Um, believe me when I say, within our culture and our language are the best practices for conservation, sustainability. We have it in our mele, if it, whether it be, I remember my, um, my auntie who just passed away, um, she was a hundred years old. She passed away two weeks before her 101st birthday. And she was a mana leo, she was a native speaker. Um, when I was gonna move to Hawaii Island, she said, you remember the hula, um, the mele, um, ahiloa, yes. What do they say in Ahiloa about Awailuku? Awailuku la ikalua kanakala. And she said, you know what that means? That Wailuku River is very deceivingly peaceful and calm. But in our old songs, they say lua kanaka. So under, under the, the surface of the water are all these caves. And the way that the current pulls, many people get put under. And they get pa, they're stuck in those caves and they, they, they drown essentially. But so don't go swimming in Wailuku River. You're not from there. And you know, these are things that um, are in our, our mo'olelo, our songs. And they teach us safety even today. Every time I see an article about somebody drowning in that Wailuku River, then I, I know why our, our kupuna preserved that kind of knowledge for us. Puakeko kumai kahe'e. Yeah, when the sugar cane is flowering, that's the time to go get the hay, to go fishing. Those are conservation methods. So all of these things are in our language and we um, please go out and learn as much as you can and then teach it to our kiki so that they know where they come from. And then when they go out into the world, they can share that with us. They become vessels of this knowledge, yeah? And we have so much to offer the rest of the world, which are crazy um, right now. Um, and so, but first we got to take care of our place, yeah, of Hawaii. So mahalo nui oko. That's all I have, Jen. My kai. Thank you so much, Pele. Um, I would love to invite everyone to give Pele a virtual round of applause and to share your thanks in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, Paula, do you have any um, closing words? No, I just thank you, Pele. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. And I hope you can come back and share your knowledge and wisdom with uh, all of us. Thank you. Mahalo nui oko. Malama polo. Everyone take care of themselves. Yeah. Mahalo nui. Aloha. <laughs>